This week in games, Metal Gear Solid 3 Remake gets teased again, Suicide Squad gets delayed, and Mario is inducted into the Library of Congress. This is the Two Penny Games Cast. What's poppin' players? Welcome back to the Two Penny Games Cast, episode 143. I am your host, Tavin Bothell, here with my good gaming buddy and fellow co-host. Say hello to the people, Connor Elliott. Cheers to a good Sunday. Monday, Cheers to a good Sunday, watching. Connor. Here we go. Of course, ladies and gentlemen, you can find us live over at twitch.tv slash two penny games every Tuesday at 2 p.m. Central Time. But we're trying to get consistent with uh, streaming the podcasts again, the recording of the podcast. So every Sunday at about 3 to 4 o'clock, we're still figuring out final timing for all of that, we're going to go live for recording all of the podcasts on the channel here for you. So if you want to see us do it all live with no uh, uh, interruptions, twitch.tv slash 2 games every Sunday. I see that boy, Jacob18. Hello, I am your viewer. Thank you for hopping into the chat right there. You, of course, can jump into the live chats over at twitch.tv slash 2 games. Uh, every Sunday with us, or every two, whenever we're live. We try our best, guys. <laughs> we're busy people. I do um, want to apologize on uh, the behalf of you know us here at the Two Penny Games cast for Tavin's failings to properly run the show. But we are finally getting on track, so you son of hopefully a things will be better now. You bastard. <laughs> I keep telling him, and I keep doing a lot of the legwork around here. <laughs> Tavin just has to do a little bit every now and then each week, and uh-huh. for some reason he just can't uh-huh. carry that workload. Yeah? He Connor, how's that, uh, how's that weekly news video this last Friday? How was, uh, I mean, how was that? The funny thing is, I, I, I meant to text you this, but now I can do it on the podcast because <laughs> it's more funny. Uh, I had done the whole thing, uh-huh. and the instant our recording from last week was ending i realized the age-old problem has finally struck me i didn't press the record button and so there was no uh there was no video to post this week in Uh, the first place well connor you know you know a quick cheat for that what's that you log into the youtube and just download the podcast (laughs) next week if i do (laughs) the podcast i will be doing that (laughs) all right well ladies and gentlemen uh if you didn't know, this is the Two Penny Games Cast, your weekly video game news podcast that comes at you every Monday, 8 a.m. Central Time, youtube.com slash two, at Two Penny Games, and twitch.tv slash Two Penny Games every Sunday if, you, if we go live with it. We'll see. Um, you can find this uh, also on mainstream podcast services of your choice. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at the number two Penny Games and TikTok, Two Penny Games, all spelled out. Uh, we had some fun TikToks go up live this week, uh, which if you're also watching on the YouTube channel, you'll notice there are shorts that go alongside every TikTok. But I've started doing the thing where like instead of cramming down the TikToks and making the audio quality really shitty by speeding it up and stuff, I'm just letting – there's extended cuts on TikTok. So go to TikTok to see extended cuts or just watch the YouTube shorts for just the quicker bite-sized minute-long uh, uh, opinion pieces and so forth. We're going to have some fun ones hitting the feeds real soon, so keep an eye out for that. But over here on the Two Penny Games cast, every week, me and Connor, we sit down and we give you the new news you need to know considering concerning the video game industry. We each come to you with two topics, two pennies, if you will, and we give you our two cents on them. Ah, I'm sorry, I keep the, the, the little bubbly from my uh, coconut... Uh, sparkling water, which is okay. disgusting, by the way. It's awful. Uh, yeah, you it's get getting... lime. Huh? You always get lime. I bought, I bought a get. package of the lime this week. I'm a big fan of the cherry, and this last week while I was at, or last week while I was at my mom's, um, I tried the sh- strawberry, which was okay. It's like a sweeter cherry. The strawberry's okay. Strawberry's not bad. But I'm a big fan of the cherry. I, of course, love the peach. Anything peach flavoring is my, is my shit. Uh, but I bought a package of the lime this last time. I just spilt it all over my mouse. Um, <laughs> oh, what, you, oh, what? We're good. We're good. We're good. Everything's okay. Good, good, good improv there, Connor. All right. Uh, so, ladies, uh, Connor, let's go ahead mm-hmm. and drop some sense on them. Let's go ahead and start with our first topic of the day. My first penny of the day. Connor, it's happening. Peach do be fire. That boy Jacob says, Peach is fire. Pro Connor, it's my first topic of the day, and oh boy, am I an excited, excited boys. Uh, 
Marie Key, a uh, rebranded Einku. Nice to know. All right, I'm going to stop looking at the chat. We're going to get to the news now. Connor, Metal Gear Solid 3 is coming in remake form. At least it continues to be teased uh, this time by the voice actress slash singer uh, of the Snake Eater theme. We are pulling an article from PlayStation Lifestyle by Zarmena Khan. Metal Gear singer and voice actress Donna Burke appears to be teasing her involvement in the rumored Metal Gear Solid 3 remake. Burke posted a photo of herself with the caption, Recording in, pro in Progress, Holding a Snake Eater Card. Metal Gear Solid 3 remake seems all but confirmed. Like the new Silent Hill games, Metal Gear Solid 3 Snake Eater's remake is one of Konami's worst kept secrets. Rumors about the project have been circulating online for a number of years. The credible leakers and insiders claim Claiming to have heard that a Snake Eater remake is indeed in the works alongside the other Metal Gear projects. And then here on screen you can see the uh, the tweet in question from Donna Burke recording in progress. <laughs> what is she doing, Connor? She's holding a little Snake Eater card? What's that about? What's happening? What uh, could she mean? So, uh, and then like as uh, Con says over here at PlayStation Lifestyle, the remake is... Konami's worst kept secret at this point. Uh, allegedly being developed by Virtuos, who also uh, on their LinkedIn is uh, has Konami listed as one of their uh, clients for an unannounced remake. I mean, it's it's coming, man. It's here, or it's on its way. And uh, Summer Games Fest cannot come soon enough. Let me tell you what, Connor, because boy, oh boy, am I excited, and boy, oh boy, I need this, man. I need this. See, guys yeah. like you, you're living over here in your multi-part remake land with Final Fantasy VII. I'm enjoying experiencing a lot of these old Resident Evil games for the first time as remake forms. But I need something that speaks to me, speaks to my heart, speaks to my soul. And that is Metal Gear Solid Three Snake Eater, my favorite video game of all time. And boy, oh boy, man, Virtuous, you better not fuck this up. Don't fuck this up. I swear to God, Virtuous, if you fuck this up... I will be a sad boy on the internet, and I will cry. You're such a hack, dude. You <laughs> always say that Metal Gear Solid 3 is going to get a remake. Is going to get a remake. You're the jinx. You're the reason why it hasn't happened, because of the years and years that you have constantly said this is coming, and it never does. And Connor, this is not, this is not true double. at all. These are blatant lies that you're spreading this on the internet right now. That double. You've said it for years, and have we seen it yet? Have yeah. we gotten announced yet? Not oh, even yeah, a not. bit. Oh, therefore, I am right. Uh... And interesting fact, I meant to say this at the beginning, Donna Burke is uh, known for making one of the best video game soundtracks of all time in Snake Eater. In Snake Eater? Are, are yeah. you talking the songs or? The song Snake Eater. Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know what else she did beyond the main theme. I mean, I'm assuming she probably did something else. Uh, so Phil in the chat has brought up another tweet by Donna Burke. Uh -huh. Hold on. This is live news. This is something I haven't seen yet. And uh, so we're, we're going to react to this all at the same time. I hope it pulls up okay on the on the feed here it looks like it is so if I my internet could get it together there we go yesterday i was recording snake eater it's not for a remake it's nothing to do with mgs3 it's for fun mason lieberman uh at mason lieberman and i should check my twitter more the garden looks lovely i had all right it's, 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 all right so they were doing something with, with the snake eater song for fun i don't know what all that's about but Kevin, it sounds to me like you once again said that it was going to happen and it's not happening like i just said a self-fulfilling prophecy is what i'm hearing right now the oracle has spoken phil has come into the chat and he has dropped the knowledge of the gods and it is that you are wrong <laughs> you're never getting it tavin you're never getting it and you don't deserve it either i deserve my final fantasy remakes i deserve my uh from software games but you don't deserve your metal gear solid 3 remake just go play the old game go do that what are they going to improve the story it's going to be the same thing <laughs> look at him and you tried to like wave this tweet aside she admitted it wasn't it wasn't for the mgs3 she admitted it you're wrong tavin you have damned the franchise again you and you alone i'm just i'm just gonna i'm just gonna say this right now and it's because ooh, my computer is chugging uh <laughs> so she says this of course uh but as many actors and voice actors we've seen over the many years, they don't know jack squat about NDAs or releasing anything or whatever. So she can say it wasn't for a remake, but why would you be doing it? It's not like Konami's just going to let you record, you know, one of their big songs for no reason. Uh, so I think, Connor, 
uh, that that is just a crack of lies. It's all uh, just to just to kind of appease the lawyers over at Konami and have them say, nah, it's not actually happening. You know, like uh, silly me. He he ha ha. I mean, we just saw the voice actor for Venom in Spider-Man 2 fuck up and, and drop, you know, possible release date information and, and you know, gameplay reveals uh, just like last month. This happened. So, I mean, and, and if you look look across just the Internet as a whole, this happens all the time. Uh, uh, Kevin Conroy, may he rest in peace, made the mistake and accidentally announced an Arkham Knight before anybody knew it was happening because he didn't know Arkham Origins was a thing. Uh, so, you know, it is what it is, but we'll see. Connor, if there is going to be a Metal Gear Solid 3 remake, when and where would it be announced? Uh, my, my, my inclination would be, to say, would be to say the Summer Games Fest, but I don't know if exactly Konami's you know, has a big name attached to that. So I could see them just dropping things randomly. Mm. Maybe even mm. doing maybe even doing their own rele- press release, their own state of play, of course, being something different, because they've been apparently having so many things in the works for a while now. And Yeah, but they blew their load real hard on Silent Hill. They did, but they only showed us like a lot of teaser stuff for Silent Hill in this test, this uh, this state of play. I hate calling them state of plays, because PlayStation didn't even do it first. In their uh, press conferences, it... Could be well, well we do have stuff. the we do have this this rumored PlayStation showcase coming uh, this this, you know, season. But you see the thing. Oh, actually, that's true. Yeah, because that, that's definitely going to be outlying what PlayStation has for the rest of the year, since we don't really know a lot of what's coming in the December, November, October months. So this could be fit in there if Konami doesn't do its own thing. Yeah, that's probably that's probably reasonable. Yeah, I'm just always I'm just always curious as to hold on. I'm moving things around. There we go. That kind of fucked things up, but it's fine. Everything's back to normal. Um, where was I going? Uh, I'm just curious as to where they go with it, because on one hand, you're right. Like, it could just be a Summer Games Fest with, like, the opening night live showcase or something. But then again, like, Konami's relationship with Jeff Keighley is shaky at best. So I don't know if he would want them on their stage, especially not if Kojima's not involved at all. I don't see them... Uh, uh, being invited to a Jeff Keighley stage. I could see them on a summer, uh, on a, excuse me, on a PlayStation showcase uh, announcement or something. Um, Or, I don't know, man, they could just show up anywhere, really. But if I were to guess, it's going to be either the showcase or opening night live. My money would probably be uh, the showcase. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, Well, Konami will screw it up, probably. God, don't screw this up. Mm. Don't screw Connor. If it is just the same exact game, but just pretty, I, I'll take that. That's fine. Sure. I'm I'm okay with that. Um, is that That's actually a remake? I don't know. But man, oh man, like, don't fuck this up. So in in the context of a remake, uh, uh, beside because I always think they would just make it look nicer and play better. Yeah, and then other than that, keep everything else. You don't expect them to do anything crazy or interesting with the story. Like, no interesting i should say change it up yeah it doesn't no. seem like a game that would no i think i think that would be a huge mistake i mean you can just look at uh, like they've learned this lesson before with metal gear solid twin snakes on the gamecube where they don't make drastic story changes in that game but they do really small things like they they make the fight choreography very matrixy and some of the dialogue gets switched around and for the most part, nobody liked that. Nobody appreciated that. So I think the story, you pretty much just leave exactly how it is. You just give it, like, some fresh animations, uh, some some updated character models and textures and so forth. You make it look real nice, real pretty. Uh, give it some updated sound effects and so forth to where it all sounds nice and crisp. Uh, but at, in terms of, like, beat-for-beat beat story, you I, I would argue you have to keep it exactly the same. The only thing I can see them adding... Um, is maybe some more environmental storytelling things because back in 2004 that wasn't really a thing. Uh, it, you know, adding maybe some like notes you can go around and pick up and read and and get more background information on who these characters are and what they're doing and their history and stuff, or maybe just like fun little side notes that soldiers are passing between each other, um, so on and so forth. I think all of that would be really cool and really appreciated. But in terms of or maybe, like, some new codec conversations. But in terms of, like, the actual story, what you're getting in the cutscenes and stuff, you would have to leave that exactly the same. Uh, I think that boy Jacob in chat says most likely just a just a prettier game, uh, but it's the same game. 
it, it seems to be what he's alluding to there. Which um, is the right way, as you said. Yeah, but what you, what we would really want is just, like, update and gameplay. We would want it to play... I personally don't want it to play like Phantom Pain, but I would want something closer to that than what we have currently with the original game. Um, Metal Gear Survive. Shut the fuck up. All right, we're moving the fuck on. Right. <laughs> Next topic of the day. Uh, Connor, this is your first topic uh, and your first penny. Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, officially delayed to February 2024. If you want to go ahead and take it away from here, my friend. I can with this IGN article from a, a guy named Alex Stedman. I think it's a guy. No, it's not. Uh, Alex Stedman. <laughs> no, it is not a guy. Alex Stedman. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, yeah, Suicide keep, Squad. Keep it rolling. Kill the Justice League officially delayed to February 2024. It was previously dated for May 26. Uh, Rocksteady has officially delayed Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, to February 2nd, 2024, quite a few months from its previous May 26, 2023 date. The developer announced the news on Twitter today, writing in a statement, quote, We have made the tough but necessary decision to take the time needed to work on getting the game to be the best quality experience for players. Thank you to our amazing community for the continued support, patience, and understanding. The statement goes on. There is much more to share in the months ahead, and we look forward to seeing you in Metropolis next year. Uh, they did a little Twitter post here. Mm -hmm. Sums up in the article. It's only the most recent delay for the Kill the Justice League, which was previously set for 2022, released before being moved to spring 2023. Last month, Bloomberg reported that the game would be delayed following backlash after the February 2023 PlayStation State of Play. During that live stream, it was revealed that Kill the Justice League would be a live service game with a battle pass and requiring an internet connection, even in solo play, garnering controversy. Uh, however, it's unclear if this delay means Rocksteady. Uh, be overhauling any of Kill the Justice League's live service elements. At the time of the Bloomberg article, reporter Jason Schreier noted that delays like these are usually for, quote, polish, rather than to, quote, overhaul the core gameplay. This latest delay means Kill the Justice League will come out nearly nine years after the most recent major Arkhamverse game, Arkham Knight. It will have players choose between one of four supervillains, Deadshot, Harley Quinn, King Shark, and Captain Boomerang. You all know probably what the game is about, and it is delayed. Yeah. Didn't expect this. I didn't I expect it, it to be so far. Uh, mm -hmm. And if it is going to be so far for it to still have a date, uh, that's what's surprising to me is that we still have a date for this game. Um, but, you know, that's what, from May? It was set to be in May and or May or June, I forget. Um, and now it's in February of next year. So that's, what, a 10-month delay? Uh, mm -hmm. That's pretty pretty massive. Um and, I mean, yeah, I would argue the game probably needs it, probably wouldn't hurt, but what are we really getting out of this? Like, it's not, spoiler alert, it's not going to be a massive overhaul. You're not going to see a, a type of video game that you want to have. What you will get probably is the, you know, online only, even in solo play, might be able to get stripped away. Maybe, big maybe on that. And you're looking at polish, so it's going to be no like limited at least you know less glitches than we probably would have received at launch and maybe the gameplay feels a little bit better but it's still going to be the same game they 10 months is not enough time to you know there were criticisms that every character looked like they played exactly the same they're not going to come up with three new play types in 10 months that feel good and work well in the game's core systems like it's just not going to happen um so what what are we really looking at with 10 months is polish, you know, maybe some story tweaks if they feel like they need to, um, some, you know, glitches and stuff and the systems being finalized, which is all great, but you're going to get that game that you were shown back in February. It's going to be that game. So just prepare, everyone prepare yourselves for that. Um, the best I could see this coming out is maybe we get a really nice roadmap for content following launch. And they'll have some back catalog of content ready to go um, with this 10-month delay or something to maybe give it more of a chance than it had. But I I appreciate this. I'm glad it is. But this game has had a long, troubled development. And I don't know if Rocksteady will be able to survive the launch of this game. I, I got to say, man, every single time I see that it's a live service game, I'm reminded of that. It just makes me think, Why? I get, oh, I get why, but I really do think this is going to come and, you know, 
hampered the game in otherwise what would be a better one. Like, making it to where you have to require an internet connection to play solo, that's really the big thing they need to change. Because it's ridiculous to expect people who may not like playing online, might not have an internet connection or at least a good one, and, you know, block them out of playing this game in any way, shape, or form. It just really is unnecessary. They don't need to do it. Just like how they didn't need to make it a live service game. I, I keep getting reminded of Avengers, and it just reads like they're being made from the top down to make it that kind of game, when I feel like it would be better if it wasn't. Because certain games make sense with a live service uh, uh, system. Like Apex Legends, of course. Titanfall would have uh, you know, made well with that. Though I don't Apex is essentially it. that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I want Titanfall to happen. I want big mechs. Me too! But... Mm, but this just, it, it reads like Avengers, where it would be better as an action-adventure game, and they decide to go for the money-making aspect, screwing over what would have been, you know, a good, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? A good uh, artistic decision to make it just a single-player, multi well, multiplayer game that you can hop in with friends and play a nice campaign. See, I'm half in and half out with, with that line of thinking, where... I think uh, the next game from Rocksteady should have been an action-adventure game, single-player, maybe co-op, and then that's it. It's a one-and-done. Rocksteady has never made a games-of-service type game because when their last game came out, games-of-service type games didn't exist. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's the real problem here. That's what you see with Rocksteady with Suicide Squad. That's what you see with Crystal Dynamics with The Avengers is you keep trying, and even uh, Bethesda with Fallout 76. And... Bioware with Anthem is you keep trying to give these big single player studios who are really good at crafting a really nice campaign with really good feeling gameplay and you keep trying to give them games of service games and it's not working that's the problem with it it's not that a superhero game can't work in the games of service model of course it can mm -hmm. Avengers could have worked Suicide Squad could work I just think the problem is and this is where I kind of agree with you, is that top-down decisions were made that benefited the idea of, of monetization, of making money, and not benefiting the idea of optimizing your studios in the best way to put out the best creative output, which, as PlayStation will show you time and time again with their studios, works. People buy games that are good. Look at Zelda Breath of the Wild. Bre Zelda games were big games, but they weren't system sellers, not on their own, until Breath of the Wild. And then now look at the, the success of Switch. A lot of that is due to that. Also, you know, with other things such as Mario Kart and Animal Crossing, of course, but it all kicked off with Zelda. And then now you have to look at these games that just like never had a chance because it's the wrong studio with the wrong IP, uh, with the wrong game design ethos. It, like, all of these pieces would work, but not together. You gotta put them in the right puzzles. And and decisions like this are, like, you just smell dead on arrival with Suicide Squad killed the Justice League. And you have to think about, like, you have to go back to when this game was greenlit or teased or, like, the first time we ever heard about this. Like, because if you're thinking about it now in 2022, even two years prior, 2020, who the fuck was talking about Suicide Squad? You know? Who, no wanted a, who wanted a Suicide Squad video game? Nobody. Nobody wanted that. Um, and so, it, it you know, th this thing must have been greenlit around the time that first movie was happening uh, in 2016 is when they must have started working on this. And once you start, you can't, re like, it's hard to stop because then every dollar you spend towards it is a wasted dollar. Um... So it's just like, damn, man, Rocksteady is a really talented studio. But, like, what is the state of Rocksteady after this game, you know? Because this is not what those devs signed on for. They signed on probably for really cool cinematic storytelling Batman games, single player, action adventure. You know, that's probably what they signed on for. And now they have to deal with this. And I'm sure a lot of them are like, all right, well, let's do it. Let's make it the best we can and, and put out the best type of game we can and... and you know, give a lot of people a really, really good game that they can have a lot of fun with. But it just keeps met. It keeps being met with meh after meh after meh from the audience and from online talk. And, you know, the, the, the game doesn't look as good as Rocksteady's previous outings. It just doesn't. Ar Arkham 
you know, I, you don't like Asylum, Connor. Yes. Uh, but <laughs> Arkham City, Arkham Knight were both really, really good games. And this doesn't look like those. They look like a step down in some ways and then just a, a, a lateral step like in other ways that rocksteady i just don't think was ready to take on this type of type of venture so at the end of all of this like all right so the game comes out two years of as much support as they can give where they have to fix bugs and and you know scramble to put content together and then people lose hope and leave and go to different studios to pursue the type of game design they want or leadership leaves and and starts new studios like we're just seeing this constant cycle of things happening we lost one of the halo guys this last week over at xbox for this exact reason like they just don't they're being put into a corner they don't want to be in and why they didn't start making games and so now we get here and you have to wonder what was the point it does look like it has a lot less soul as you said well you didn't say that exactly but uh, compared to the last batman games and i just I don't know, Tavin. The one defense I can say for this game in its current state is uh, I'm really, really, you know, looking forward to getting to that second level of the, the, you know, season pass, season one pass, I hope, and getting that classic Harley Quinn outfit. And then I'll, all of these worries will go by the wayside, and I'll be so happy when I finally get that cool cosmetic item. Trust me, Tavin, it'll, it'll level out somewhere. I mean, it's just like as an IP, think about it. Like, they've already said it, hey, new characters will be coming soon. Who? Who's coming? <laughs> Who do you want to play as in the Suicide Squad? Joker? Killer Croc? Killer Croc? Uh, Mr. Joker Freeze? I don't know. Like, you know, like, all of this would be, like, really, really tough to, to continue. And, yeah, I just think, they, I think they've made some poor decisions to, to, to get here. And uh, to close this out, Tavin, I have a question. Mm -hmm. Can I drop this game on my list of... Uh... Yeah. I can't? Okay, I, I couldn't remember the rules if it was like, oh, if it gets beyond the release date, you just screwed up. No. Well, no, no, no. If it gets delayed out of the year, you're fine. So yeah, you, yeah, you can get rid of that. You gotta get to work on that, man. I'll tell you what, you're, you're running out no, of games. No, 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 no. There's gonna be more games announced. I'm waiting for those. You're, you're putting a lot of, you're putting a lot on I that, am. Connor. I don't think, I, I don't I think a lot of the games getting announced are not coming this year. Oh, we'll see. We'll Please. wait till the Summer Games Fest, and then you'll see my points being spent. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Moving on to topic number three. Connor, your second topic of the day, your second penny. Go ahead and take it while Good. I recover from this hiccup attack. I <sighs> gotta read again. Well, this one's from Game Rant from uh, Esther Voros. I believe I named that right. Sorry if I did not. Um, the Outer Worlds 2 could be coming to PlayStation after all. Uh, the Outer Worlds 2 could possibly be a PlayStation game as well. Two years ago, fans have been treated to a very self-aware reveal trailer for The Outer Worlds 2, which specified it, it'll be an Xbox console exclusive game. But new developments may allow fans to speculate on whether that decision was final. The Outer Worlds was released in 2019 on PC, PS4, and Xbox One. A month ago, Obsidian also released a version for the next generation consoles. Overall, the game's reception was favorably was favorable by critics and fans alike. The Outer Worlds received high ratings with, review, with reviews and sold over 4 million copies by August 2021. The sequel was announced on June 13th, 2021 at Xbox and Bethesda's shared presentation during E3. However, it was specified that The Outer Worlds 2 will only be released on PC and Xbox. While this no doubt came as a disappointment for those who played the game on PlayStation, at least they could, at least they could be consoled by the fact that the sequel is not a con continuation of the first game's story, but set in an entirely new star system. Uh, the reason why there could be doubt about The Outer Worlds 2 remaining a console exclusive comes from a job listing. On its website, Obsidian had posted about looking for a senior quality assurance analyst who would be needed for its quote, next great multi-platform RPG. While multi-platform could still be interpreted as Xbox and PC compatible game, uh, the listing expands on the desired qualities for the position. Under, quote, pluses, which, pluses. Pluses, definitely pluses. Uh, yeah, <laughs> definitely pluses. Uh, which are the qualifications not essential for the job. Experience with, quote, first-party certification testing for games is added, and the examples named beyond Xbox requirements are Nintendo Lot Check and Sony Technical Requirements Checklist. Uh, this still doesn't necessarily mean The Outer Worlds 2 will be available on PlayStation. Avowed, 
is another RPG currently being developed by Obsidian. Therefore, the po uh, position could be for that game or any other unannounced games Obsidian could be working on. It's also possible the examples given for the qualification just provide a broader range of what Obsidian might expect from those applying for the position, but not all will be needed. However, fans could also speculate that with the recent feud between Sony and Microsoft, Obsidian might have been asked to add PlayStation back among the available platforms to further placate Sony. Whatever this development means can be up for debate, but whether PlayStation players will be able to play The Outer Worlds 2, after all, won't be revealed until Obsidian comes out with further news about the game. It seems reasonable that they would release it on PlayStation, as highlighted with the lawsuit that's been going on uh, against uh, Microsoft acquisition of Blizzard and Activision. And it, it makes sense. I mean, there's no reason to make games, and we constantly talk on this podcast, to not make games again harder to play from people but easier to play and the first game was made on the playstation it's all bureaucratic stuff that would make it not be on the playstation this time around and hopefully from these little bits and pieces of information we're getting that could be indicative of that indicative of that that's the way you say that word mm -hmm. yeah i don't buy it uh <laughs> uh so like like it's a decent point of like xbox is very player friendly play games where you want to play them yada 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 the thing is is that i don't believe playstation studios would let an xbox studios game on their console um because the yeah. xbox studios like thing would have to pop up and playstation doesn't want that uh, <laughs> playstation has been very clear with their uh proceedings and how they've been running their ship that very clearly they don't want um xbox and their stuff they don't want to be friendly they don't want to be kumbaya with everybody and i think their recent antics over the activision blizzard uh acquisition is a great example of just how much how far they're willing to go to diminish xbox's standings in the overall game marketplace <coughs> and if I were Xbox, I'd be pissed off right now. And I'd be like, all right, this is how you want to play? Then, then we'll play that way. And we'll we'll go over here and we'll take the biggest and greatest Western RPGs with us. And this is just what it's going to be. So Starfield is exclusive to our console. Elder Scrolls Six exclusive. Avowed, exclusive. Outer Worlds, exclusive. Um, we'll play nice with those who want to play nice. So you can play on PC, which you've always been able to done, do through Xbox Game Pass. You know, uh... Xbox currently handing out 10-year deals via streaming through xCloud with everybody and anybody who will take them, except for Sony PlayStation. And uh, I, I think the the little, like, qualifications things is just, hey, we have this really technical role, and we want someone with experience of, you know, applying games to multiple different types of consoles, you know, like the Sony PlayStation, like the Nintendo Switch, like the Xbox, like PC just so that we have the ability to do that if we choose to. But, yeah, I don't see this as, as any type of legitimate sign that Outer Worlds 2 or any Xbox game, studio game, uh, will come to PlayStation anytime soon. Just because PlayStation has made it very clear that they're in this to, to destroy competition. And so Xbox, I think, very clearly, who wants to be Kumbaya and be all together is i think in the last couple of months specifically has taken offense to that so this i think is more of like we just kind of need this role to like fill this job and these are the type of people we're looking for and you can't just have like in this industry where it's so like it's a small industry you know it's really not that big um and so this specific skill set like is needed and so they're going to cast a wide net to bring in whoever they can but it's all for the purposes of just completing the job that needs to be completed i guess i uh i can't really uh say much on the game itself because i barely played the original outer worlds the most interesting thing about this is what this means for avowed because i want avowed to be as available as possible because it sounds like the coolest game in their catalog right now uh, and i really with the one on with that. the one announcement trailer and nothing else yeah. <laughs> and it's saying it was like skyrim with destructible environments that set me on did they say that yeah, that was the way they described it. Well, I would hope so in 2023, because I'm playing Skyrim right now, and let me tell you what, that game feels 13 years old. Yeah, yeah, but it still holds the stand time, stand, stands up the testament of time, because it's still fun. You're playing. It's still right? fun, but it's definitely, I said 13, it's definitely 12 years old. You know, like, yeah, that's you know, so all of this we'll just have to wait and see, Connor, but yeah, I, I don't. Don't if you're a PlayStation player, don't be like, ooh, there's a chance. There's there's not 
I don't think there's a chance. Moving on to our final topic of the day in my second penny. The Super Mario Brothers theme is the first video game tune to enter the Library of Congress. This is a Verge article from uh, Umar Shakir. Excuse me. We're living in a Nintendo renaissance right now, which includes the release of one of the most successful animated movie launches ever. Brand new theme parks and a best-selling console. But now, the Super Mario Brothers theme, one of the most recognizable tunes ever, is being eternally honored with an entry into the U.S. Library of Congress. The Super Mario Bros. theme is officially known as Ground Theme, as it in the above-ground music in Super Mario Bros., and was first included in the game when it was released on the Famicom and Nintendo Entertainment System in 1985. It marks the first video game music to be inducted into the Library of Congress. Ground Theme was produced by longtime and current Nintendo composer Koji Kondo, uh, who created not only the many iterations of the Mario theme, but also many other recognizable tunes from Punch-Out! to The Legend of Zelda. He's also arranged music in the Super Mario Bros. series, Star Fox, and the latest original music in games like Super Mario Odyssey and Super Mario Maker 2. Bacondo's Super Mario Bros. theme is certainly his most recognizable work, and its tune has been reused multiple times in different Mario games, shows, and movies. Nintendo even trademarked the famous coin sound from the game in 2016, which is one of the most reused sounds in all Super Mario titles. The Super Mario Bros. theme is one of 25 new inductees to the U.S. Library of Congress National Recording Registry. It's entering alongside well-known works like Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is You, Madonna's Like a Virgin, Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven, Eurythmics' Sweet Dreams, and Daddy Yankee's Gasolina. Uh, but probably the biggest honor for Mario is entering the registry alongside Carl Sagan's famous recording of the concept behind his book, pale blue dot in which Sagan describes the image of earth taken about 3.7 billion miles away by the voyager one probe in 1990 person uh, we don't care what you personally think about it. Uh, no earlier in this uh in this article you had mentioned that he's also arranged music in the super mario bros series that was super smash bros uh i believe that's not what you said but if i am wrong i thought i said that can, if you're right well people can go and make fun of i you. said a lot of super a lot of super something's going around throughout all but i'm pretty sure i said super super smash brothers in that yeah it, arranged music from the super smash brothers series star fox in the latest i'm pretty sure i said that if not whatever it doesn't matter uh it doesn't i mean it does yeah. thank you for catching me if if that's true but i thought i got it. but i'm trying to pick you yeah do it do it connor nick picked me to death anyways oh, connor okay. The above ground theme, the Mario theme, is being inducted into the Library of Congress. First video game theme to be inducted. What are your thoughts? Well, it should be. <laughs> so the whole... The, whole <laughs> the, the Library of Congress is, you know, cool. And they add things that are good. And so it's good that they have this. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Being gaming's first inductee makes sense. Long, you know, should have happened probably years ago at this point, but we'll take it uh, as it comes. And, uh, you know, that's the one to go is probably, mm -hmm. you know, Mario above ground, the Mario theme. That's the one to that's the one to do it. Dun, 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 dun. Like people who don't even know Mario know that music. So or people who've never touched a controller know that music. So, you know, that that uh, classic song for a classic entry. Number one, that makes sense. What are some other songs do you think should probably follow this or come after this, or maybe something that should have been first instead? Do you think? Uh, no, I don't think uh, this anything should have been first before this, because as far mm. as video game music, it is the most iconic. It is kind of the one people have thought of for years when they thought video game music. Uh, obviously, video games are you know enjoyed by a larger audience than it did back when Super Mario was released, but it was still a cultural icon at the time. And the music helped, you know, be a big part of that. So uh, even though it definitely deserves to be the first, I would like to see other ones added to it. Now, this ultimately just kind of becomes a conversation of what is my favorite song? And that should be in the Library of Congress because it's my favorite song. <laughs> so, but that being said, going back to the first story we did, Snake Eater, from oh. the game Snake Eater, it's oh, an amazing thing. Speaking to my soul, Connor. It is one of the best songs in a video game. It is hard-hitting and is emotional and it sounds like a 007 it does song. 
It does. And it just adds to the coolness factor. Of it. I, I think if we're talking Metal Gear, I think the alert theme should probably go in first. The dun, oh, dun, 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 yeah. dun, dun, dun. Like that one probably should go That's in before true. Snake Eater. But, I, you know, I personally love Snake Eater more, of course. Uh, mm -hmm. That boy, Jacob, 18 in the chat, says Zelda soundtrack was gas. And yeah, oh, I mean, that oh, Legend yeah. of Zelda theme's got to go in there at some point, right? Um, in terms of like what's next, like what should be indicted next year or whatever, or the next time they do this, I don't know if they do this every year. Um, Legend of Zelda has a great case for that. I think Tetris, the Tetris theme, mm -hmm. should probably be thrown in there. Um, uh, Final Fantasy's. Da, 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 yep. Da, da, da. Yeah, the victory theme, or even just Final Fantasy's main theme, I think works as well. Um, but, you know, there, yeah. there's a lot of classic tunes and a lot of classic songs that I think should be thrown in uh and inducted into the library of congress you know through my time uh, as a gamer granted i'm only 25 so i missed a lot of like the old nintendo stuff but you know i think of you know the elder scrolls theme i think of uh, uh metal gear solid of course that we already mentioned there's a lot of like classic classic uh tracks from even i think ratchet and clank has great music especially those first two titles has great music um i would want something from mass effect personally oh, a lot of great music in mass that. effect you would never get that they would no never. you don't think so a lot of people a lot of people you know boast uh the suicide mission um the the song for that is as like one of the greatest video game songs ever made not my personal favorite i like earth from metal gear solid 3 um uh, uh, excuse me mass effect 3 <laughs> um i like that one a lot um i think the map theme from mass effect 1 uh is really great and there's just a lot of other great songs from from that trilogy of games that i think have a shot at it but of course we would want the classics in there first so i think the legend of zeldas the mega mans the super smash brothers tetris uh you know sort of things that like out of respect should go in before you know some of the more contemporary music starts getting uh added to it but uh I mean, congratulations uh to to mario and the team and uh uh, uh koji Kon uh, kondo for uh their in, their induction into the Library of Congress. It's a great honor. It's not too hard. It's it's pretty easy to make a iconic video game soundtrack, though. Oh yeah, it's so just, easy to make many... iconic video. It's iconic anything, Connor. It's so easy to make mm -hmm. iconic anything. It is. That's why there's so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> not because not because some of the most talented people on Earth worked really hard for decades to, to make it iconic no, no. it's just because they you know they were bored on a random wednesday and said here here's here's the greatest song ever made kind of sad that's how the way the world works but what are you gonna do <laughs> fucking come on man ladies and gentlemen that is it for the news this week connor we don't have any type of review or anything happening this week because well we're just kind of in between games right now but uh on the backs of the Super Mario theme being inducted into the Library of Congress, you can catch our Super Mario Brothers movie review live uh, now over at youtube.com slash at 2 games. We've also got a TikTok uh, up for that, which I'm very, very proud of. One of the best ones that we've made so far. Uh, and uh, so please go get show that some love. That one's really, really great. Uh, it's about to cross the 2,000 mark on YouTube, which is something we haven't personally done for any of our YouTube shorts. None of them have uh, broken 2,000 views. So it would be really appreciated if you gave that one a quick click just to kind of get it up there and see if we can get it going. Uh, also, the TikTok one just kind of did our average TikTok numbers. So I'd like to boost it up and see if we can punch it up a little bit more than that over there. So please, uh, TikTok 2 Penny Games, all spelled out. Ladies and gentlemen, that is going to be it for the Two Penny Games cast. But don't worry, if you're watching live over at twitch.tv slash Two Penny Games, we're going to be rolling right into our recording of The Piggy Bank. Uh, and we're going to play some fun mini games. We're going to bring Phil in here. It's going to be a great time. Uh, but if you're watching and listening on youtube.com slash at Two Penny Games or mainstream podcast services of your choice, remember to like, share, and subscribe for all uh, Two Penny Games goodies coming in the future. Until next time. Have a great time, and Connor, say goodbye to the people. Goodbye, people.